my name is Fraser Simons and this is my channel Springboard Thought. Today I'm going to do a quick review on the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. So first off, this book is very multi-layered. It took me a long time to get into the prose because essentially the styles are changing all of the time. Or maybe not all of the time, but in the beginning they change quite a bit. It goes from um, the family's basically induction into the slave trade to a Civil War era to contemporary. And in that time period, we get situated with a lot of different characters. And sometimes it takes a while to become clear why we're getting all of these perspectives. The main contemporary line with Ailey is the longest we spend with any one character. And it's definitely the one I think that has the weakest prose, unfortunately, just for me. It's very Hemingway-esque when he's not at his best, I would say. It's short declarative sentences, but the sort of rhythm, the musicality, the full stops to um, long sentences, to just general structure of the paragraphs and sentences are just, sort of not there, yet I know why the contemporary prose mirror that because contemporary style is almost quintessentially Hemingway-esque. So it makes sense that it would go with that, but uh, as a personal taste with me, only a few works of Hemingway that I've read has actually resonated. And most of the time I find it very annoying that contemporary style is embodied in Hemingway prose because it is often not done well. There's a description and specificity that is lacking in the prose simply because they think mirroring, uh, mirroring the structure is all that is needed. So I found the prose quite bland and it is definitely a grind to get into, so just know that going in. However, as the story continues, more things are multi-layered and it becomes clear that this story parallels a lot of things about the black experience in America. In many ways, it's the embodiment of probably the core issues and the most difficult things to articulate. You just have to get there. <laughs> I would say the novel probably started unraveling for me very later on, like 50 or 60% on. And the reason why it continued is because so many people said it was an amazing book. And so I figured that eventually all of the things that we were consuming was going to have more meaning, and it does. We start to get a much bigger uh, representation of the family and a multifaceted one of all of the characters, from her two sisters, I believe, to her father, to her mother, at various times in their uh, timelines, I guess you could say. E even later on, I think even after all of the stuff has established, we get the perspective of her mother, and then we get the perspective of like her grandmother at a time as well. And then as Ailey um, goes into a project in which she looks into her family history, all of the timelines coalesce very smartly. And especially, as I mentioned, with the 50 or 60% in, uh, it starts getting really intelligent about expressing tonal ideas and thematic ones in the family. For instance, when uh, Ailey is recalling trauma that was done to her as a child, which is sort of permeated throughout her experience, but um, as it's articulated to another character, what happens is the chapters start becoming tonally linked. It felt like to me when very strong notions about Ailey's identity, especially as it pertains to family, um, it would sort of cascade down the lines. So she would talk about the trauma, which is uh, a pedophilic event between her, uh, an older parental figure and her. And then we get the uh, through line that has been created from the past of these different characters, some of whom are pretty vile and evil. And it gets linked up such that we kind of see the history of where um, that learned behavior and 
the maybe not the reason, but a multifaceted, nuanced look at what sort of created that parental figure in her life um, and still be able to condemn that person for what they did, but also because of the multifaceted look at it and for how long that we have been building towards that point, we see that um, it's a sum greater than its parts, basically. And it became a lot more evident of what the book was trying to do. And I noticed numerous times as Ailey is out of her teenage years where this happened. Very specific events cascade down the line and we can tell, oh, this is why we're getting this specific um, story of the past with her ancestors and her heritage and everything becomes more and more nuanced. It felt very methodical. It felt like you it felt like you're watching one of those um, time lapses of a house being built. You're seeing the foundation, you're seeing the bones created, and then you're seeing everything else. And so you understand much better what the construction is and what the house sort of represents. And yeah, I thought it was a very captivating and interesting read. But again, Later on in Ailey's life, we don't see the change in style that we get with the historical fiction periods, which was very strange to me because you would think that um, Ailey's intelligence and her interest in school, just her general intellect basically, would be getting more multifaceted, different, um, structurally different anyway, but it, it sort of maintains that kind of bland Hemingway s sort of prose throughout it, which was very frustrating for me at some points because uh, it doesn't reflect Ailey as she is articulating herself in the story. She's much smarter than the prose suggests, I think. Uh, her ideas are more complex. Her range of emotions and what she does feel almost like barred because of the prose structure that it has been like delineated or behind basically and so it feels like a strange thing but it doesn't stick around for too long because it quickly becomes about her experience with her family through the textuality of her interacting with all these documents that she's collecting and making sense of and then we get again the multifaceted look about what she can interpret from her family history and how it pertains to the very specific instances of historical fiction that we're able to interact with or are given and then extrapolate all these different themes and it becomes a story about America, about the black experience and again about very core issues in black culture which you would probably expect just from the title of the book and if it hadn't been for my bulking with the prose and not getting along with them. And that's why I chose the audiobook um, after getting it out of the library. And I suggest that's what you do as well. If you pick up the physical book and you're finding that the, the structure, the pagination on there is just kind of bland and uninteresting and not engaging, go for the audiobook because the narrator is great um, and it's a new way to consume that voice. And so what I would generally end up doing is go to uh, the audiobook for contemporary stuff. And then when it went to historical things, then I would switch it up and it changes quite often. So you can do what you want, but I think there's multiple ways to be able to consume the book and get what you want out of it. Um, I think rereading it, knowing the complexity of what is going on or the multifaceted nature of the narratives and sort of the validation that you get as a reader from putting in the work of continuing to trust the um, debut author, I believe, through that, you know, 50 or 60% of a pretty large book to be able to get where it does. Um, there's a, it's a rewarding experience. And so I definitely recommend it. Uh, if Again, it hadn't been for the prose hangups that I have, it would have been a five out of five star read instead of a four out of five star read. So take from that what you will. 
I think that's all I've got to say about it. And I would love more recommendations if there are other books in this style that's trying to do the same thing. I'd love to consume those and compare. So feel free to let me know and otherwise I will see you next video. Bye.